Well, it's uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, New Year's Eve, on a Sunday. And uh, I'm out here having to build a heater for the fish tank because we're, we are going to have a cold snap. And it's supposed to get cold for several days, freezing weather. And uh, all I have in the uh, fish tank, in one of the fish tanks, is a... Um, uh, one of the in-tank uh, aquarium heaters, 300 watt, which it barely keeps up, but it's not quite enough. So uh, I've got to get something else going. And uh, had all the, the, well, I thought I had all the parts and pieces the day before, and I've been trying to get it together, but, you know, things get busy, and you don't quite have a chance to uh, to get everything done that you want. I'm putting a water heater heating element into a PVC pipe and in turn I'm going to run the pump water through it to uh, help keep this cool and heat the uh, fish tanks. So what I'm working on right now is my adapter. See this one? So it has a small lip on the inside and that's what I'm drilling out right now. I'm getting it all nice and smooth. I figured I'd go ahead and go through the whole process for those people that like the whole process. See, that, using what I have, I've had this from a previous project that I was doing. You know, I mean, that's what you do. You use whatever you have. You know, it's a lot cheaper than having to go out and buy everything. But if you have to, well, it's always nice to have it. See, Back and forth, get it through, and uh, I'm going to put a uh, piece of sandpaper in there to smooth it all out. What I'm doing here, I'm taking my same, the same bit that I was using to uh, make the hole. I'm uh, going to wrap sandpaper around it. You see that? This is the piece that I made right here. All I did was wrap sandpaper, 50 grit sandpaper. Um, had some some uh, sandpaper I was using to... Uh, to uh, uh, sand she rock so that's all that is right there you see how it looks kind of rough see that yeah it's not gonna look like that afterwards I'll tell you that much needed this piece to fit down all the way into this other adapter this other adapter this is the only one that I could find to go from 3 inch to uh, uh, the smallest diameter they had was 3 inch to 2 inch so this one had a small lip in there that was going to prevent my fitting from going all the way in. So as you can see, this one goes all the way in. And that's what I'm looking for right there is for this sucker to go all the way in. That way my heating element will be exposed to as little uh, plastic around it as possible. Next thing I'm going to do is... I'm going to trim off this lip off of here so that this will fit further down into the uh, to the other connector. And the other thing I'm going to do also is I'm going to trim some of this off right here. I'm going to cut all that off. And what I'm going to be using for that is a uh, chop saw. See that? I'm going to be very careful while I do it. Keep your fingers out of the way because I have seen people chop off their uh, ends of their fingers. And uh, take your time. Don't be in a rush. As you can see, it did a pretty good job of uh, of knocking off that little lip that was on there. And uh, I mean, it's a little bit rough, but it's nothing that a little bit of sandpaper is not going to take care of. All right, so this is about what it looks like uh, after I'm finished. Uh, taking out all the plastic and everything <clears throat> the inside right here I noticed that uh, when I had it all together air it was kind of close to the heating element now what I didn't want to do is cut this side right here too small because uh, once you glue it all together it's not going to uh, it's not going to give it much room to stick so I used that bit at an angle to kind of dig all that out now, in hindsight, uh, what I would have probably done is before I cut the uh, length of this, I would have went ahead and dug it out so that uh, any part that I would have messed up, 
I would have messed it up and uh, I wouldn't have it as short. Now, if it would work like that or not, well, I'm not really sure. But, um, I mean, it's still pretty good size. I've got about, uh, I'd say close to about a half inch, maybe, of a uh, surface that's going to stick. And uh, I think that'll work pretty good. I shouldn't have any problems with it. And uh, the main thing is, is that I took all the plastic out from where the heating element's going to be. And uh, that little gap that you see right in there on the threads, I don't have it all the way tightened up yet. I just have it hand tight, so that's going to go away. So it's pretty much not going to have anything that's next. That's going to be next to the heating element. And that's pretty much what I want. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to have that adapter going into this other one. And that's going to fit in like this. See? So, like I said, I, I'm not going to have anything close to uh, the heating element, is, which is exactly what I want. I don't want anything close to it. So when this one sits into the uh, pipe, let me see if I can get a shot of that right quick. There we go. So when it sets into the pipe, you see the, how the heating element is away from everything? And with the water flowing through it from the pump, it's going to give it enough circulation that it'll keep it uh, keep it cool to where it's not going to burn anything. Alright, so this is what this whole piece looks like all put together. I've got my heating element. This is a uh, 3 inch to 1.5 inch... Uh, T. I've got a uh, three inch to two inch reducing bushing, and then a uh, two inch to one inch reducing bushing to hold the uh, heating element. The heating element is a uh, one inch. So I think it looks pretty damn good. All right, that's going to be the location that I'm going to be putting the heater in. I want to put a. Uh, a T right there, a valve, and bring the heater up, down, and across over here, and I'm going to tie it back in over here. The valve over here is going to shut off all the water going back this way and divert it up the T to the heater and back around this way. I'm going to put another valve about right there to shut off the water from going back. So when I turn this one on and this one off, it'll run like normal. I'll turn this valve on, send water to the heater, open this one up, and it'll allow water to go out through here. All right, it's 926. I got to hurry up, get out of here, go get dressed, and uh, get ready to go to church. But I got it. I got all the plumbing done. Everything's working. You see the water's turned back on. Got the water going in here. Got the water bubbling over here. And in all the towers, you see the water running there, 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 and for the tomatoes. Everything's running, everything's working. Uh, one last minute change that I did make was uh, right here. So that's the heater. Originally, I was gonna turn it down and have the water going uh, straight down from there. But then I realized that uh, water wants to take the, le the path of least resistance. So more than likely what was going to happen was that the water was going to run from here, uh, go through the um, water heater and straight down, end up leaving um, air trapped in there, which is probably end up messing it up. So what I did is I went ahead and turned it up so that the water will collect over here in the water heater and then end up going up. So that'll be less chance for me to have air uh, trapped inside the water heater. So that's one little design change that I uh, made. I figured it'd make a bigger difference. I uh, went ahead and put all, uh, another valve over here because I forgot that I needed it. And I'm glad I had an extra one. So I have a shutoff valve right here, shutoff valve there, valve there, and one over here. Uh, still got to wire it in. Uh, need a, um, a temperature control. 
But uh, that's that's kind of the least of my worries right now. I can turn it on on the timer for right now, get everything going, heat these fish up. Uh, and that's about it. I've got to go get dressed. Uh, thanks very much for watching. All right, a quick, up, quick update. Um, I got back and uh, went ahead and wired the thing up. I've got to wire it up temporarily until I get uh, the uh, temperature meter in and that'll regulate it automatically but for right now with a cold front coming in i went ahead and uh, let it run uh as you can see i've got it all piped in and done went ahead and hooked it up to a gfci in case it starts leaking or something and uh it'll shut off by itself but the uh heater heating element everything's functioning correctly I can touch it and it doesn't burn. That means that there's enough uh, water going through to keep it cool. The uh, water, let's see, I've got, uh, got 275 gallons here. And this tank right here is about a hundred, say about 180 more or less. Then I've got another tank down at the bottom. And all together the, uh, it's been running for about uh, four, four hours now, and the temperature has increased uh, one one degree, but it's not getting any colder, so that's a good thing. And both tanks are evenly temp the temperature on both tanks are even, so that's great. Fish seem to be, to be happy. Suckers are huge, about a pound each. <laughs> Hopefully I don't drop my phone. But the system's running great. As you can see, nothing's burning up, nothing's melting. Uh, everything is pretty cool to the touch. It's still warming up. So everything's working pretty good.